Hey guys, it's Bree. It is time for our June garden tour. If you're new here, we are in zone 8A in North Texas. We have had so many days recently above 100 degrees. It has been crazy. Some things have been struggling in the garden, other things have been thriving. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on. The first bed I want to show y'all is the sunflower bed. As you can see, they are loving this heat for sure. We have some pretty tall ones over there about to open, but none of these are open just yet. The front row right here are the cherry rose. And if you look at these ones, they have a little bit more of a darker veining to them. And then also the stem is really, really dark as well. If you look at all these other ones, they all have bright green stems. So yeah, the front one is the chocolate cherry. And then we have the cherry rose. Then we have the autumn beauty. And then we also have some cutting golds. Now the cutting golds are a little bit smaller down here and I'm worried they might be getting blocked out from the other ones, but we'll see how those do. Then we have the skyscrapers, which like this one isn't that tall, but those ones over here are also skyscrapers and they are pretty big. And then in the very, very back here, we have our mammoth sunflowers. But if we come around, and look, this is one of the skyscrapers that is about to open soon. I think those are so cool when they're in that stage. So I expect to have a lot of really pretty sunflowers very, very soon. So in the bed right next to the sunflowers is where we have all of our peppers. We actually harvested our first jalapenos the other day. I'll put a picture on the screen. They were pretty small, but they tasted really good. I actually used them to make stuffed jalapeno burgers last night, and they were pretty delicious. So the plants have definitely gotten a lot taller. The habaneros in the front, they're not as big. Let me go ahead and show y'all those. So the habanero plants may be stunted a little bit, but they have put on a whole lot of new growth. So I still have a lot of hope for those. But compared to these jalapenos, you can see quite a bit bigger over here. And then we actually have our sweet cherry pepper over there that is turning down there on the bottom. It has a couple peppers on it. And then this is the new poblano pepper that I had planted not too long ago, and it's still pretty small. But the jalapeno plants are doing really, really good. And then like you can see, we have peppers on them all over the place. You can see all of them over here. Those peppers, those peppers, and then those ones over there have some as well. If you've been watching my videos and you know that my plan this year was to grow a bunch of jalapenos, that way we can make our own cowboy candy with them. So I know so far I've only harvested three, but last year my peppers went all the way until the frost. I want to say I still had peppers growing in December. So I am definitely excited and I plan on these being prolific and giving me tons of peppers. Same thing with the habaneros. Now last year when I grew habaneros, I think I only got like, I don't know, maybe 10 habaneros. I don't know, not very many. But this year with four plants and them in the front not being shaded by the other peppers like last year, I'm hoping to get a bunch of those as well. I really wanna make some mango habanero sauce or barbecue sauce or something like that. I think that would be really, really delicious. So, so far the peppers are doing great. For my tomato wall, at the very beginning we did have a few issues. I had bought six different tomato plants and I don't know if I had accidentally cut the tops off of them or what, but they all stopped growing. Actually, not all of them, all of them but one. But most of them stopped growing and then they all curled up really, really bad and they just didn't do anything. And I knew it wasn't a soil issue because I did have one that I bought at the same time and planted in the same soil and it was doing really, really good. And that one is still doing really, really good. We've actually harvested a few cherry tomatoes off of it. So what I had done is I had actually started a whole bunch of tomatoes from seed earlier, but I didn't have high hope for them. That's why I went and bought a whole bunch of tomato plants. Well, thank goodness I did start all those from seed because those are the ones that I actually ended up using. I tore out all the ones that were not doing good at all, planted all the ones that I grew from seed. They were pretty small when I planted them and they have grown so much. This one right here behind me is one of the ones. This is a chocolate cherry and it's doing really, really good. Let me go ahead and show you all a few of the tomatoes on it. 
Again, the variety is a chocolate stripe and you can see those stripes on there. And then it's got some more down here. This one does look a little weird on the bottom, if you can see that right there. But these are growing pretty nicely. And it's got buds all over it as well. And then all over here. This one next to it is one of the original ones that I had purchased. This is a Cherokee Purple. It is grown really nicely. This is the one that I do not have on drip. So this one is kind of an experiment to see how it does by us just watering it. And you can see it's pretty tall. It does have two liters. I let a sucker go and so I do have these two liters right here. And it's growing pretty nicely. This one right here is a black from Tula. There is no tomatoes growing on it yet, but it is growing pretty nicely. We do have some leaves that are curling on it right here, but that could just be because of all this high heat that we have. We do still have a bunch of blossoms on it right here. Moving down the line, this is a large red cherry tomato, and you can see that it has grown pretty tall. And we've actually harvested a bunch of fruit off of it already. And there's one of the little tomatoes right there. Now this one has more of a limey green color. So I think I need to give it some more fertilizer because that compared to like that right there might be a little hard to tell, but it's got some weird coloring going on to it, but it's growing pretty nicely. It's almost as tall as I am. This is another black from Tula. No tomatoes growing on it, but it's still growing pretty nicely. This one right here is a tropical sunset, and we have a nice little cluster of fruit on it right there. That one down there is a big rainbow, and we don't have any fruit on it just yet, but it's growing nicely. Having to start over with my tomato wall definitely set me back a little bit, but they're all growing nicely. And I'm actually more happy with the ones that I have now because I grew these ones from seed. So it's definitely a special thing for me. Last year, all the tomatoes that I grew from seed, none of them even made it long enough to go out into the garden. So to see these ones growing and actually giving me tomatoes, that is very, very, very rewarding. So tomato wall is doing good with the heat. Just for reference, so you see the tomato wall back there on the, on the back side. And then the sunflowers to the right, the peppers are to the left. So moving over here, this bed does look quite a bit different. This is the bed that had all the onions in it. Currently, all of our onions are right there curing. If you missed my onion harvesting video, we did have a few onions that got pretty big. There's those ones, and then there's like these ones right here, and then this one. But as you can see, most of them were pretty small. But these have been out here curing, and I think they're almost done. It says to wait till they're like papery dry on the outside, and it's getting like that. So it's almost time to bring these all inside and actually do something with them. I'll let y'all know what we decide to do with them. But back to the bed they were in. So this is where all the onions were and then we had the strawberries in the middle. Now we still have the strawberries in the middle, but some of them are not looking too good. These ones are doing okay, but like I lost, you can see all the brown crunchy leaves. I just broke those leaves up and just let them compost back in the dirt. But we do have a few that are over there. But these ones, I think because they were shaded from the onions and now they're not, I think they're having a little bit of an issue or a shock. But, I mean, they're still sending out runners right here, so I'm not going to give up on them completely, but I have removed a, f a few plants. Now, I also moved some things. Now, the two on the outside are blueberry bushes. Let me read you all the varieties. This one is a tift blue blueberry, and this one is a... Vernon blueberry, both of which are supposed to be good varieties for where I'm at. And it has some new growth coming on it right here. But both of these I bought at Home Depot and I just stuck them in here. If you remember, I had a bunch of pots right in this area. I didn't want those pots anymore. I wanted to have as much as I could on drip. So I moved those blueberries into this bed right here. And then right here in the middle, is a Texas Everbearing Fig, and you can see it has some new growth right there. This one, and then 
that down there in the corner and that down there in that corner. That one is a LSU purple fig and I think that's what that one is over there as well. So all three of these were over there next to our dog yard. Unfortunately, they kept getting hit with a weed whacker. So I didn't want them to keep having to die and start over. So what I decided to do was dig them up. Well, I had my husband dig them up, but he dug them up for me so I could move them into the bed. That way, not only would they be protected from the weed whacker, but they also are on drip now and they weren't on drip over there. And so they weren't getting watered very much. So here in the bed, I think they have a higher hope of actually surviving. So that's why these are in here now. And then we do have one more blueberry variety. I think this is the one that I'm not sure how to pronounce. Let's see. Ochlocken? I don't know. I really have no idea, so I totally probably butchered that. This one is actually still has berries on it for us. So this is basically going to be my berry bed and fig bed. Hopefully. I think they're doing a lot better now that they're on drip. So that is very, very helpful for sure. We have a little garden fringe. Can you see it right there? Got a pretty cool web. I also just noticed that this fig is actually showing a lot of signs of life right here. So that's definitely promising. The only one that's not showing any signs of life is that one over there down in the corner. Moving on to this bed over here. Our dark opal basil has finally started doing something. I actually cut the tops off of them to hopefully get them to start branching out and it's working. So if you look right here, I cut it right there and there's this new set of leaves and this new set of leaves. So it's causing it to branch out and to be a bushier plant. So that's definitely exciting right there. My Victoria rhubarb has gone dormant. I thought it was dead, but my sister looked it up and said that they just go dormant here in our summers. In the middle here, we have our red cabbage looking really, really pretty. However, if you look, there is tons of damage on it. These are from those little caterpillars. I've been pulling them off. I don't know if I'll be able to find one to show y'all right now. Probably not because I just pulled them all off last night. But this thing has been getting eaten by the caterpillars, but I've just been pulling them off. I haven't sprayed anything on this at all. Underneath here, there is a nasturtium. It's alive, but it's not getting any sunlight. So I don't know how long that's going to be there. I did have a zucchini on this trellis and a zucchini on this trellis, both of which died, so no longer have zucchinis, but I did stick something else in there. You'll see that in a future garden video. Now back behind it, our cucumbers are doing really, really good. They are really liking the heat. You can see them running all across the ground here. So that is one plant, maybe two plants. The other two plants over here, that one hasn't really taken off too much just yet, but I see that there are flowers all over it and there are little baby cucumbers. You can see up there, oh, there's a spider up there as well. But there are cucumbers all over it and flowers all over it, but we don't have any that are actually ripe just yet. But that is still pretty exciting to see all the flowers and all the growth with all this heat on that. Back here in the corner is where I dug up my apple tree and planted it in here. And I am proud to say it is not completely dead. We have quite a few new leaves on it actually. So I think I may have actually saved this tree. Now all this, there's no leaves on any of it. but. To see that new growth on those limbs right there, that's pretty happy to think I saved that. Down here in this pot, I have a American Beauty Berry. Got it on sale for $3. Unfortunately, I had my son come out and water it, and instead of watering the actual soil, he sprayed water all over the plant and it was still in the sun. So I'm assuming that's what this is all over it. 
So I don't know if it's gonna recover. It looks pretty sad, but I'm hoping it does a good job. Here we have our grapefruit tree. Now I think it is growing from the rootstock because if you look, there's this right here growing, but there's also that right there growing out of it. So that over there has a few little tiny thorns right there. But if you look at this thing, this thing has some major thorns going on. So I don't know, I'm gonna leave it cause it's growing. So we'll see what ends up coming out of that. My pink lemon tree does have some growth on it. It's doing okay. It kept growing a little bit out of it and then it would die and then grow a little bit more and then die. But since we've been getting all this heat, it's been steadily growing out of each side right there. And then we also have our bountiful blue blueberry bush. It's doing really, really good. It gave us a lot of blueberries. There's nothing really on it anymore, but it gave us a lot of blueberries and they were delicious. That's another one that we got from the Lowe's clearance. I think it was like $5 originally, like 30 something. My sister found that one and gave it to me. After seeing how many blueberries I got off of it, she was kicking herself, not keeping it for herself. <laughs> but the blueberries were definitely delicious. So one final bed inside the garden, and I think it's the prettiest bed so far. My zinnia bed, I have all kinds of zinnias growing. We'll start over here with this back one. This is a giant double violet queen. That is just absolutely beautiful, and it's just getting started. We have our giant double enchantress, also beautiful. On the giant double lavender, we don't have any completely open yet. We have this one down here, let's see. That one's starting to do its thing. This next row is supposed to be a candy striped. This is the second flower that's open. I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see the first one that we got, absolutely beautiful. But I'm hoping, if you actually look, you can see the kind of pink in there, so I'm hoping that one will actually come out looking like it's supposed to. And then this next row right here, these are the cactus zinnias. So these definitely have a little bit different of a growth structure, but that's what this one is. But then this one right here is also supposed to be a cactus, but it looks a little different. So we'll see once those get a little bit bigger what those look like. Now this next row, let me come around out of the sun is my pink lemonade. So this one was starting to grow and looking like it was supposed to. And then this one grew. I was not expecting a red at all. I'll show you the picture on the screen, what it's supposed to look like. I mean, it's pretty. I don't really like red flowers, but it's pretty. But it's supposed to be more of like a pinky, yellowy, limey, greeny color. That one's starting to look like that. So we'll see, but soon I will have tons of zinnias to make bouquets out of. Now you can see some of these are pretty stunted, really, really small compared to the ones next to them. So I don't know exactly why that is. They were all planted at the same time, but it's still early in the season. So we'll give them some time. For the most part, everything inside the garden fence has done pretty good considering the weather we've been having. Now, the things that have shown the most signs of stress are my outside flower garden beds. Now, those I've had to adjust the water recently on them to try to make them a little bit happier, but we still have quite a few things going on. Let's go ahead and take a look. We'll start down here at the end with this beautiful Head Over Heels Passion Hibiscus. Look at the size of that flower and look how beautiful it is. We've already enjoyed quite a few blooms on it and there are just buds all over it. Our balloon flowers have already bloomed and these are just going to seed, so I need to save the seeds on those. I did lose a bunch of my celosia, but there's still a few in here. My ornamental onion. This one has not sent up any actual bloom stalks yet, and you can see all the edges are all crispy here, so that's not doing too good. My Lily of the Nile, actually, is that my Lily of the Nile? Yeah, I think that's my Lily of the Nile. 
it's not doing too good right there. The butterfly bush has given me quite a few blooms. This one's like a really soft lavender color. Really, really pretty. The double scoop mandarin echinacea has done great. Now, these are dying, but I'm letting them just go to their seed pods because I think they're really, really pretty. We got a few right here that are just starting. My Pavonia rock plant has just done really, really good. And it's so big now. And you can actually see the flowers open in this video because I'm doing it in the morning. So these ones you can see right here are already going to seed. So I'll be collecting those and then saving those to plant later. Then we have our salvia. This is the one that I transplanted. It's doing pretty good. My passion vine flower, this is the blue one right there. It has grown all the way up and it's starting to go to the other one where this one is already at, coming down. Let me show you this one. That one's really, really beautiful. But those have both taken off in the heat. These two salvias, I just love these. The color of them, they still look really, really cool. The mums have gotten huge. And if you look, they do actually have little buds all over them. My mums over in a different flower bed already have flowers on them. This is the hibiscus that I thought was completely dead. But look at it. It is covered in flowers here and buds. It's already given us quite a few flowers. Waiting for those to go to seed. You can see, oh, well maybe not on that one. But these will start going to seed. Let me see. So this would have had seeds in it, but it looks like something already ate it. But this is just covered right here in buds. Lots of flowers. The guara, I don't know. It's still got the pretty flowers on it, but I don't know if it doesn't like to have wet feet or what, because it's kind of going a little crazy. My... What is this? Oh, that's exciting. This is my, what is this called? Rose of Sharon. And it actually has buds on it. But I mean, you can see how bad the plant looks. This thing has been getting eaten alive by grasshoppers, but to see buds on it, that's pretty exciting. You got my canna lilies or calla lilies right there. This, I don't know. I'm starting to think it's a weed because it's definitely not the Joseph's coat that I was hoping it was going to be. So I think it's just a weed. This right here is my other hibiscus. This is a classic double peach hibiscus. We've gotten quite a few flowers on it. You can see this one right here getting ready to open. And then there's definitely some buds still on it. I've gotten a lot of pretty flowers out of this one right here for sure. So the flower beds aren't looking as pretty as I would have hoped them to, but they are still putting on some flowers. Next we'll go over this flower bed right here. This first plant is my trumpet flowers. This thing I also thought was dead. I transplanted it from a pot that was in front of the house and it has just done amazing. And let me go ahead and show you all the flowers and the cool seed pods that these plants produce. Well, you can see how tall the plant is right here. And then look at these beautiful flowers. This one's got a couple holes in it. Probably because of that grasshopper right there. But just look at this. And you can see the size of it. Here's my hand. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. But then, after the flowers are done, they put on these awesome seed pods. And once they dry out, I'll actually be able to save seeds from it. I did that last year. So there's that one right there. This one right here. Actually, you can see this one right here. So the flower is dying and it's growing that seed pod right there. So that's exciting because this is just beautiful. And I hope to grow more plants in different areas of that later on. Now, the rest of the bed, you'll be able to see some of it suffering from the heat and some of it is thriving. Let's see which one's doing which. Lavender. 
not doing too good. You can see it's definitely really, really crispy up there. The bougainvillea hasn't done anything. The poor peony. That one is so sad. It actually looks better than the other one, believe it or not. So that one is not thriving. We have more canna lilies. Calla lilies, I keep calling them the wrong thing. More calla lilies. The salvia right here. I deadheaded it once. I need to deadhead it again to see if we can get some more blooms on it. And then the butterfly bush. The grasshopper on there. Get off my flower. Thank you. So this is putting on new blooms all over it. Lantana is loving the heat. We do have my flax lilies slowly but surely popping up out of here. And so they're doing okay. You can kind of see the other ones down in there. That was labeled as a Supertunia bubblegum. I don't think that's what that is. I don't know what it is, but it's really, really pretty. And I got it for 50 cents and it looked almost dead. And you can see it's got all kinds of growth on it. Really, really pretty. This lavender is more protected, so it's doing okay. And there is some calla lilies down in there. This huge thing is a weed. I did not plant it, but it is grown and it is huge, as you can see. I used it as a filler flower in one of my bouquets, but it does smell kind of gross. So I don't know if I'll continue to do that or not. You can't tell, but there is a lantana down there getting smothered by this weed. The hyssop, look at this. This hyssop has done amazing. It would have done better if it hadn't gotten broken off at the bottom down there. So that's why there's a huge old hole on this side. But imagine if that whole thing was all full. That is just amazing. The butterfly pincushion flowers are still doing really, really good. A couple of the plants that were next to it didn't make it. Then we have our, what is this? This is the Cape Daisy starting to put on some blooms. Here's the other peony, completely crispy. So definitely did not do too good, unfortunately. Then we have our Shasta Daisy. More calla lilies that have gone out of bloom. Our salvia. And then our rose. Oh, there is actually a rose to show you today. Look at that, really, really pretty. But it's definitely got new ones coming on as well. Now this is my canna lily. This is the one that we dug up at my dad's house, his old house before he moved. So it's grown pretty big, but there's no blooms coming out of it yet. But it's definitely getting really, really big. We'll swing over here real quick. Here is my peach tree. The peaches are still not turning orange just yet. So, and they feel pretty hard, so those are not ready just yet. But we do have several on here. There's this one right here. And there's a couple over there. I can't wait for the peaches to be done. That's gonna be really, really rewarding after waiting so long. Now, I had a delphinium. I don't think I watered it enough. So unfortunately, it's just an empty bucket right now. I just cut the top off, hopefully giving it a chance to come back. And then I also planted something else exciting in there. But you'll have to wait till future garden tours to see what I planted in there. Irises, some new growth is growing. Some of them aren't doing so good. I don't know. And the bed's getting some weeds in it. Definitely didn't turn out exactly like I anticipated, but I'm hoping next spring to have a bunch of really pretty irises. So stay tuned for those for sure. I definitely wish I had gotten out here a little earlier because the sun is just very intense right now. So I do apologize that things are really, really bright, 
But now we're over here on the back of the house where the dahlias are. And I just did a video of the dahlias, so I'm not gonna go too far into depth in those. Um, I'll give you all like a quick glance at them, but you can definitely watch my dahlia update video to see how those are doing. Now, since that video, I've actually been able to cut some dahlias off of there, and I've made a couple of flower arrangements. I'll put pictures on the screen of those that I made. It was definitely really rewarding to see those flowers in there that I actually grew. Very exciting. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look at those. You can see the Kelvin floodlights, the mottos, and the lucky numbers on that one. This one is mom special and supposed to be mystery day, but those didn't come up. And then we have lavender perfection and cream de cassis. I think is how you pronounce that over there on that side. So those are doing okay. Here is the purple hyacinth bean. It is definitely starting to grow and you can see right there, got new leaves all over it. And so that is working its way up the trellis. That had a butterfly bush, but it died. So that's just a weed in there. This raspberry butterfly bush is doing really, really good. And then has these beautiful blooms on it. So, so pretty. This one right here is the morning glory. And you can see it is also making its way up. It's all the way to the third tier right here and still growing. So it likes the heat. The kids beds were doing really, really good. Then we had all this heat and not doing too good, but we did get a sprinkler now that we set over here. So hopefully that'll start doing better. Our watermelons right here, you can see all that not doing good, but then right next to it is all this new growth. And there's a bunch of new growth coming out right there. We only have one watermelon growing, but it's getting mushy, so I think it didn't get pollinated. Then we have the black from Tula tomato that I grew, and we added these tomato cages in there. Our cantaloupe that I was so excited for is getting soft now, and I don't think it's done. It definitely doesn't look done but I'm very upset that that's getting all mushy and then the leaves are dying. And then we had another cantaloupe over there. You can kind of see that it's getting mushy as well. I am happy to report that the black petunias in the middle, let me show you, are actually blooming. So that's really exciting. My gumfrina needs to be deadheaded, but I did use that in the bouquet. The eucalyptus, I used that in one of the bouquets, and it's doing really, really good. My pineapple sage, I don't know. It didn't get watered good enough a couple times, so it's definitely got some crusty stuff on it. But since we started watering it with the sprinkler, it seems to be doing okay. And then something that I just realized, we have our first eggplant. Oh, that's so exciting. This is a black beauty eggplant, and we had had flowers on it, but it had died. So I'm excited to actually see a eggplant growing on there. Spinning around to my son's bed, we have, I don't know what kind of flower that one is, but it's a really pretty one. Then we have a habanero. We have a lantana. I believe this is a jalapeno. Yes, then we have a jalapeno. That is his ghost pepper. I don't know what's going on with it, but it's losing all its leaves and not giving us any flowers yet. So don't know on that. This is a chocolate striped tomato. It's covered in buds. So I hope to see fruit growing on that soon. And then we got his celosia that needs to be deadheaded. That stayed bloomed for a long time. And then we have another habanero right there. My daughter's bed. We have little tiny zinnias, like the size of my finger. This was just in a um, zinnia mix. So that is just so cute. You can see that one little, little flower coming right there. Really, really cute. And then we have, that is a salvia. That is a, what is that, snapdragon. 
that one is also a snapdragon and then that is a gunfrina now she also had some sweet peas in there and some other things but she didn't get out here every day and water hers like she was supposed to so a lot of her seeds didn't come up so to be honest i was surprised the zinnias came up but they were really the only ones that did the sweet peas came up and got like this big and then they were definitely short-lived they died so it's okay hopefully she learned that when she plants seeds she has to come out here and water them i've made the mistake too and that's why i told her that she definitely needed to water them a lot um, but it was too hot outside. She didn't want to come out here. So unfortunately she did lose a few, but that's okay. She learned hopefully. That's it. Um, I know there is a couple things on the other side. Um, I have my glads right now. They're not blooming. I did actually have one of each bloom over there. So I'll put a picture on the screen to show you those. I used one of them in the arrangement that you saw not too long ago. So that was pretty exciting. But um, yeah, those are the Purple Flora and the Espresso Glads. Very, very nice. My other pot with the Glads in there that I had saved from last year, I didn't water them. They all started growing, but then I didn't water them and they got the end of the day heat. It's just straight baked by the sun. So those aren't doing too good. So I don't know if they'll recover or not, but I'll definitely, once they do die, I'll pluck the tops off, save them inside, and then hopefully they'll come back next year for me. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a very, very hot day today, unfortunately. We do have a cool front rolling in. It'll be in the mid-90s instead of the hundreds, so that'll be nice. But yeah, with this heat, I definitely had to adjust my water schedules. Um, the dahlias, I started giving them more waters. Oh, I forgot to show y'all the pumpkin patch. That is another thing that unfortunately has struggled quite a bit with the heat. But what we did is I bought a sprinkler and I've been running that sprinkler for like 30 minutes in the evening. And I've like almost instantly noticed an improvement. So let me go ahead and show y'all. Now it's still embarrassing to show y'all this, but I want to be real with y'all. So first we'll go over the pumpkin seeds that I personally planted. Those are actually doing pretty good. So let's start with those. These ones right here are the pie pumpkins. These were started from seed by me. We didn't get germination on this one right here, but we did get this one, that one, and that one. So that was good. And then this is one that I planted right here. I don't know the variety, I did forget on that. And then we have that one right there. And then all these other ones were from my pig that I used to have in here. We fed them to her last fall and they all just started growing this spring. So some are doing better than others. The other day, these were all just laying flat on the ground. I'll show you some in the back that are kind of still doing that. But what I'm wondering, is if I'm getting the squash vine borer. Now, I haven't done anything to get in there to try to get it out, but I mean, it's still growing and giving me blossoms. So I don't know on that. We got some here. This one did completely die. This was a, a really big one. This was the one that was more of like a bush. Completely dead, so I pulled it out. We got our watermelon. We did have a pumpkin growing on there at the end. It rotted. But I'm thinking positive. We also have one right there. So hopefully that one will continue to grow now that we fixed the watering situation. And then we do have this one that I grew from seed. And then you can see like that one and that one over there. Not looking good at all. This one has a little bit of damage down here at the bottom. And same thing with this one right here. Looks like it has some damage down there at the bottom. But it's got all this new growth. But then it also has all those leaves that look really, 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 really sad. And then all of those seeds I planted back there, none of those actually survived. So that was a bummer. And then 
all these that I planted right here and right here, these were the little mini pumpkins and none of those survived either. So my way of watering was just coming out here with the hose and giving them a little bit of water each day. And sure, that was doing okay for a while, but once we started getting all those 100 degree days, that little bit of water that we were giving them was not enough, unfortunately. So we got this big sprinkler. Actually, let me go ahead and show y'all so y'all can see what we got. I got one kind of sprinkler at first, and the first night we used it, it broke. So that sucked. But this next one that we got has done pretty good, and I am pretty happy with it. So we got one of these. It has this on the end, but it has an option to put our quick connect on it. So that is very, very, very convenient. And then you can adjust how wide it spreads and how far it goes like this. And that has been great. So what we've done is we started putting that in the pumpkin patch for about 30 minutes every night. And then over there in the kids garden bed, for about 30 minutes every night and I have like I said instantly noticed a difference as soon as we started doing that so I think that's working out um, if things start to decrease again then we'll go ahead and up that and water them a little bit more but for now we're doing for about 30 minutes now in the future if I continue to do a pumpkin patch over here I probably want to get some kind of ir drip irrigation that will be on a timer it's not hard to come out and set the hose but if we had it set up on a drip and it automatically did it for us, how great would that be? Got all my chickens behind me just hanging out. I bet if I open this door, they'll all come running to me. Let's see. Hey, girls. There's one of my newest chickens, the naked neck over there. Super cute. Got our silver lace wand dot over there. Got Subaru. What's up, Subaru? We got our speckled Sussex over there dust bathing. I don't know if you can see her over there. But they haven't really been enjoying the heat. What we've done is they have their own drip water system. Um, but we went ahead and added a bunch of other water bowls out here as well. Um, a big one that they could actually step in if they want to. They won't drown or anything. It's a little shallow one. But that way they can actually put their feet in the water and cool off a bit and it seems to be working. We sadly lost a few chickens. We lost three in one day. I don't know. I've never had that happen before. So I don't know, but it was when it first started getting hot. So I don't know what the deal was, but unfortunately, yeah. We lost three chickens in one day. And so we've been definitely coming out here, making sure the waters are all filled up We've also actually been using just a nine by nine um, cake pan and we've been putting water in it and putting cranberries in it. Um, my stepmom gave me a bunch of cranberries for them. So we've just been putting those in there and then freezing it and then bringing it out here each afternoon and they go crazy for it. They love it. Um, I used to give them corn in water, but I read somewhere that I guess the corn is actually not good for them in the summertime because it makes their body heat go up or something like that. So. I stopped giving them corn. So I've been giving them the cranberries and then when I run out of those, I'm gonna be giving them like peas and carrots. I do have some of those as well. So no corn, but they're just all enjoying it right now. They're in the shade until like, it's almost out of the shade. You can see where the shade is right there. So soon they will be in the sun, unfortunately. And then they do get sun almost the whole day until about 5, 30, 6 ish, roughly. But we do have this cover on top. That definitely helps out a lot. And then inside there, we have their little cover in there um, that they hide underneath there as well. But right now, I think they're just enjoying the shade. Well, I guess that's it. All my loofahs I grew, unfortunately. Well, all the loofahs that I planted, none of them grew. Oh, and then all my corn. Out of all that corn I planted, only one came up and I didn't water it properly and so it grew like this tall and then it died. So my corn patch that I envisioned having in the middle of my yard did not work out unfortunately. 
But that's okay. Better luck next year, hopefully. Well, that's it, you guys. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me while I showed y'all everything around in the garden. As y'all saw, some things are thriving, some things are not. But overall, everything's doing really, really good. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. We'll see y'all in the next video.